services that ever would be reported that I have. It's all lies. Okay? I've never said that. What I've said is, is that I will take... Heatherwood can go, it can be developed in nice apartments overlooking the race course, if we get this. If we don't get this, you can't develop it. And it should be the same attitude actually all the way around. I wouldn't say close Wexham without knowing you're going to get this. And my fear is, sir, is that there's this, this death by a thousand cuts. And unless people step back from it and go, actually, what's sustainable? Where would we put it? I fear that we're going to lose the services that you've just described. Presently, we don't have any transport to take us from the south side of Bracknell to Maidenhead. Have you got any transport plans? Yeah, yeah, no, I have, because I, as, as I mentioned earlier, there are plans apparently in existence of a road here. If they put this hospital here, sir, I guarantee you I'm going to be shouting loudly about building this. Because it would make all the sense, particularly if Frimley, Heatherwood, and so we say Royal Barks merged. The site to bring in this community down here from Sandhurst, where are we? Down this area here, who are served by, currently served by Frimley. To get to Maidenhead, they need that road. They're not going to do this, are they? All the way up here and over there, that's quite a journey for them. But you might get them there, they'll be persuaded if that's the case. And, it, and it's, yes, it's a grand vision. Of course it is. That's my job, I think. It is my responsibility to look at it and go, do you know what, this is actually in the best interest of my constituents. And I think this is. The gentleman at the back has uh, Andy will come to you in the room, we just... Hello, um, I'm Neil Coleman, I'm a GP in Britwell in the South. And I did write to you when you put out your initial oh. uh, plans. Did I not reply? You did reply. No, no, did I did not um, But my, my question really was, um, is in two parts. Yeah. It, you've moved it to junction um, 8-9. Now, yeah. when I, I came to the area about 25 years ago, there was talk about building something at junction 6. Yes. And it depends which hospitals you involve, but you actually are moving away from a large bulk of the population in urban mm -hmm. areas if you're moving away from south. <laughs> Secondly, you say it's not partly political, but I'm sure that other people would suggest that it is if you move an acute hospital out of a labour held in the constituency well, until 97, into it was, a conservative held. Until 97, it was a conservative, so I don't really think it's... It's not... It, first of all, and for some, there's obviously some loose wire here. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think the goes off after a certain yeah, time. Reading's an urban area, yes? Sure. So where would you put it between Reading and Slam? I, I, um, it's got to serve at least 500, 600,000 people. Minimum. There aren't 500, 600,000 people in Slough, even with all those things that have been built in back gardens, I gather. Um, there aren't 600,000 people in South, and there aren't 600,000 people in Reading. Um, it's got to be between the two. That's my point. Um, again, you know, if you're in Sippenham, Chalvey, you can get there quicker than you can get to Wexham Park at the moment. And the people on that side of South, they can get a, they get a Hillingdon. Um, it's, I guess the point is, is that wherever you decide to start, I mean, you maybe you should start at the White Cliffs of Dover and grab 600,000 people and go to right hospital, 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 hospital. Probably what they should do is, it should be a national plan. But if you're going to take Berkshire, East Berkshire, South East Oxfordshire, this sort of area, it's got to be on the M4. Now, whereabouts on the M4? I just think 89 has a, it's just, this, this location is, 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 in terms of the road infrastructure that currently is in place, and also the opportunity to put in the extra road down, um, I think it lends itself to getting more people there. Um, I understand the people of Britwell and Manor Park Estates will be going, well, hang on a minute. Um, but it's still only about 20 minutes. 
in a blue light. You know, it's not, it's pretty good. It's 40 minutes at the moment people are broken up. So, kids are always, if they're lucky. You know, um, I'm just trying to make it just a bit closer to the people of Reading and Bracknell because you need that population to support the hospital. Um, but by definition, wherever you choose, it will be slightly further away from where some people have been used to. That's just the nature of it, really. I think Andy was there. There is a problem that I don't think you've yet touched upon which is that in the main, as, sorry, there is a problem, in, we haven't yet touched upon, as far as I'm aware, but in the main, the uh, number of staff based, number of consultants based in any hospital in this country is determined entirely by the Royal Colleges of Physicians and Surgeons. Um, they have the final say on whether or not, for example, a, an acute uh, service like um, emergency services, whether that is actually placed there. I mean, without a consultant for um, uh, uh, emergency room, you, oh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, what is it called? Okay, the cash department. Uh, you, you just don't get, you yeah. don't get the service. No, no. Without them being on board, are they on board? Well, Two parts of that. One, the rural colleges don't decide who's, where they are. Okay. The, rural, okay. the second thing is, is that the rural college of surgeons, the rural college of physicians, the rural college of obstetricians and gynecologists, paediatricians, the King's Fund, all support what I'm saying. All of them. Because particularly the paediatricians and the orthopedic surgeons and, and the obstetricians, they've just done this in Northumberland driven over 14 years by an obstetrician. Um, the clinicians, certainly their rural colleges, firmly support the need for this to happen. Um, that, that needs to the, problem, the problem, the politicians, but the problem ones. I mean, I, I went, uh, Andy, I went down to Marlow and the Conservative leader of Wickham District Council, standing in Marlow, you think he might have been happy, yeah? standing in Marlow, criticising me publicly, telling me it was a silly plan, it wasn't in the best interest of his constituents. Okay, so it, it's, it's the politicians, I think, actually. Um, and I think the public, the general public, so it's a classic example, actually get it, they sort of understand it and are prepared to listen. The politicians, particularly the ones in Westminster, seem very reluctant to, to say anything because they're wedded to this belief that defending current services is good politics. And I don't think it is because what about those MPs who defended mid-staffs? Now, I'm, not ex I'm not saying that they were responsible for the care, but part of the problem was they were trying to maintain services on two sides because it was good politics to do so. It wasn't necessarily good care, Andy. And I think that the politicians have got to realise this. Um, and I, I think that actually it's, there is movement. But, but, it, but it's, what you're saying is as bad as the political decision made by David Cameron recently to support the chief of the NSS. It, it, it's, it's, it's indefensible that he's defending and saying he's doing a good job because patently he's not. I don't want to broaden it out into politics, Andy. I'm, I'm really desperately trying to make these as apolitical as possible, these meetings. Um, but I have sympathy with what you're saying. I, the, the, the key thing, Philip, is what I think we often forget is it is our money as taxpayers to residents that is funding our health care. The fact that in the, you know, the very, very good reasons that we have a system which potentially can deliver a huge amount of wonderful things and our, our family has benefited from some significantly specialist care 
um, as well. My question really is, the debate seems to be lodged in the wrong place at the moment amongst many, many people. I have a local resident who lives five minutes walk from Brands Bridge, yet I know will go to the grave fighting for Heatherwood Hospital because they think that that is something very, very special. What I want to ask you is, don't we have to be very clear and stark that people can survive in this country and locally less damaged from acute conditions, strokes, heart attacks, etc., if we have this hospital? And if we don't have this hospital, two things will happen. One is consultants will walk because the facilities won't be nearly good enough. We saw that um, with a consultant who was treating one of our daughters at a different trust who felt it was getting progressively unsafe and under-resourced to operate there. So we don't have the expertise, which selfishly I want for every resident in the Thames Valley, be there Buckinghamshire, be there in Berkshire. And my second point is, when can we actually really start aggressively going out there and saying, you can live a better quality of life and survive from these conditions if you can get to that hospital in 10, 15, 20 minutes. At the other end, there's a consultant on call who knows how to treat you. Because what I think is so, so sad is so many people just accept what is there at the moment. Maybe taking some interest in programs or the media or something that shows about new treatments, but failing to realize it could be real if they could access those services. Because if that debate was going on, you would have hundreds of people saying, why don't we get on with it? My worry is that people still believe that their recipients, their reactive recipients of healthcare in this country, are proactive <laughs> citizens and residents yep. deciding what is best for them. And I have to say in a very selfish way, best for them, their families and their communities, <coughs> in wanting you know, that which will keep them alive. And it's the quality of life. No. I mean, we're not, we're not up there, are we, in terms of well, no, I mean, nationally, in terms of survivability and quality of life? Sorry to mention my father again, but the operation he received is not available in this region. Okay, now, how can I look at my constituents in the face and say, there, 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 I'll defend the current status quo of healthcare services in the area. I'm going to be there with my banner, defending Heatherwood, defending whatever it is. When I know that because i medically qualified and because I've got medically qualified friends and I made some phone calls and I said, look, my father's got this wrong with him, where would you treat him? If it was your father, where would you have him treated? So he ends up up at, uh, in West London, uh, at uh, Imperial, um, at Mary's, and he has an operation which isn't available um, and certainly wasn't going to be performed locally. He was going to have a much bigger operation locally, and I didn't think that was necessary, and uh, it was confirmed to me that it wasn't necessary. Now, I've got trouble for saying that, apparently. Daily Telegraph, it upset the clinical director of Wexham Park. Um, I've got a letter, you know, um, and, I, and I think to myself, well, what's my responsibility as a member of parliament? Is it to try and deliver better care? better clinical outcomes, or is it not? Is it to try and improve the level of care in this area, or not? And if it is the case, and it is the case, it is the truth that I, all within, you know, I don't put any strings, everybody here is allowed to, entitled to be referred to whoever they want to be referred to, I didn't do anything untoward, I just happened to know, I had knowledge. And so he got treated um, where he did, and he sat over there. Um, I think everyone in this room would do that for a loved one. Um, but I would be feeling pretty uncomfortable if I was then saying to my constituents, you can have, you don't deserve that. And so that's, you're right. This is about better clinical outcomes. Forget the money, it is about getting a consolidation of expertise and equipment, 21st, 21st century, proper equipment, proper facilities, not walking outside to go to the theatre. Here, you go on a trolley outside on the way to the theatre. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. And, you know, I know this is, 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 is um, people have, they feel very emotive about it. 
They felt very emotive about the hospital in Tatra where I was born. That doesn't exist anymore. It was an outstanding paediatric outpatient for rheumatology at uh, Tatra. It doesn't exist anymore. You don't have to tell me about being and feeling bonded and, and, and feeling like that's where my baby was born or that's where my mother died or whatever. I understand all of that. But if it's not fit for purpose, it's not fit for purpose. And if you want better care and better clinical outcomes <coughs> within finite resources, which are always going to be the case, whether it's Labour or Conservative, it's always going to be finite resources. I don't know of a better way of doing it than this. Um, if someone else does, fine, bring it forward. Let's have the debate. But we've got no choice. It's going to happen. And it's a case of, do we want to happen in the best way? Which I would say, say was having a five, ten year plan. Or do we just wait for collapsing services and, and things being driven in a negative way instead of saying, no, I'm going to grasp the future and I'm going to do this. Right, I think, one more question. Doesn't have to be, huh, gentlemen here, yeah. Does MP for this town support your plan for this hospital? Um, no. Um, she, look, I mean, she's, she backs for the other team, of course, so there's, you know, um, it's, it's relevant in that we don't, um, we don't meet as much, we don't talk as much. Um, I think she, it's in a, she's in a difficult position because about half of her constituency can get to Junction 8 9 quicker than Wexham. So to be against it is difficult, to be for it is difficult. So I'm not here to score points with her. I think, I like to think that if it actually started to be talked about as being a credible plan, that she might engage a bit better than she already has done. She was invited to this four months ago. Okay. Um, indeed, every MP has been invited, relevant MP has been invited to each meeting. And the MP for Maidenhead attended and the MP for Wickham attended. Um, and so that's her choice. That's her, you know. Um, now that uh, Heatherwood and Wexham is merging with Grimley, it seems, this is going to become more and more of an issue for her. That's my hunch. Anyway. Um, well, I hope I've answered questions and perhaps dealt with some doubts and some misunderstandings that have been somewhat portrayed in local papers and things. Um, all I'll say in conclusion is, is that this is really is about trying to improve um, services, not cut services, trying to make care, put care in appropriate locations, outpatients close to home, acute care in appropriate buildings. Um, this is, um, you know, I'm coming towards the end of my sort of local campaign on this, um, and I'm under no illusions about this happening tomorrow. But actually, I'm beginning to think that it will happen at some point, and I hope that all of you are here today, uh, engage in that process, so that we can end up with the best location and the best outcome for us all. Thank you.